Hello everybody, so Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings is finally here, so today I'm going to talk about it. Let's go. So this video is probably a little bit later than you probably expected it to be, because I'm in college, so I first had to find time to watch the movie, and then find time to film this video. Therefore, that means that I saw the movie a week after it came out, and I'm filming the video five days after I've actually seen it. Really great for having a movie really fresh in your mind for doing a review. It's perfect. So, anyway, uh, before I get into talking about Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, I also want to mention, uh, clear up some possible confusion. This hasn't actually been brought up in the comments or anything, but just want to say that it might be a little bit confusing how I made the No Way Home video reaction or thoughts on the trailer for Spider-Man No Way Home uh, on this set with the white wall that used to be white. Now I decorated it all nice like this, so it now looks more on brand with my channel and not just, again, white wall in the background, boring. Uh, but so that video was here in my college dorm, and then I posted uh, The Flash Season 5 and Crisis on Infinite Earths videos, and so those were on my old set because I had had them backlogged, I had recorded them before I came here, so uh, that's why there's going to be a little bit of back and forth. Currently, there's only one more video, uh, Arrow Season 8, that's going to be on that set, so you'll see this in this video obviously then you'll see in our season eight the old set and afterwards you're going to see this from now on uh, i'm not sure how consistently i'm going to post i'm going to try to do every week but who knows uh obviously for this week it's easy shang chi and legend of the ten rings to make a video about but sometimes it won't be as easy to figure out what i should do um i'll definitely do what if which to pause one second to talk about what if I'm really enjoying it. I think it's really doing some cool stuff with the MCU. Um, I really want Star Wars to do a what if. I think that would be cool. But for Marvel's what if, uh, I think it's great how really the changes they make in each of the episodes, like the change that split the timeline, never is really like, it's not as simple as that's, you know, that's the what if, you know, like for captain carter for peggy carter being you know getting the super soldier serum the change isn't peggy carter gets a super soldier serum the real change is peggy carter doesn't go to the upper level when steve is getting the serum she stays below and therefore all the stuff happens and she ends up getting the serum but you know it's not as simple as just you know she got the serum instead of steve it's you know there's a smaller detail that led to this bigger thing and it's like that for each of the episodes so I think they're doing a really great job doing some really cool stuff so I'm enjoying it I'll get more into that when I make that video um, once you know the episodes are over uh, once you know the season ends I'll make a big video talking about my thoughts on what if as a series um, and so stay tuned for that. But now, without further ado, let's get into Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. So first, I'm going to give a non-spoiler review, just in case you haven't seen the movie. Um, and so, I thought it was really good. I thought it was much better than I expected it to be. Um, I think it combined a lot of things that I love. It's like a martial arts film mixed with like you know, maybe some like Avatar The Last Airbender stuff, and some samurai stuff, and of course, Marvel stuff, which I obviously, I love Marvel, so it just ties a bunch of things together to make this thing that is really a fun watch. The energy of the film is really great. There's, you know, it's really fast paced. The choreography is amazing in all of the fight scenes. Like, there's so many fight scenes throughout it, and all of them, I'm like, that was amazing and the story was also really interesting and complex and I thought they did a really good job with 
the story of it. And you could tell, like, this is the true start of phase four for the movies. Like, Black Widow, that was more like a phase three film that got left over, that was just like, oh yeah, we've got to make that, so let's make it now. You know, that what didn't that didn't feel like the kickoff to phase four, but this this feels like the kickoff to phase four. This is like, okay, okay, they're doing some cool stuff. I'm I'm excited for it. So uh, this definitely felt way more like the kickoff to phase four. And for that, I thought it was amazing. There's some twists and turns and there's some returning characters in it from previous movies that, uh, you know, that's always fun when Marvel brings in other characters um, from other things to make you be like, that's from the other movie. It was a ton of fun. I thoroughly enjoyed watching it. The humor was great, the energy was great, the fight choreography was great, the story was great, the character of Shang-Chi, I wasn't sure what, you know, who this character was at first. I was just kind of like, I don't know if I'm gonna like him or not. I love his character now. I think he's amazing. I can't wait to see him in future movies. He was amazing and I would definitely recommend this movie to obviously if you're an MCU fan you're gonna love it and if you like this kind of you know uh, martial arts after last airbender samurai kind of stuff um you'll definitely enjoy this also anyway though let's get into some spoilers and uh so I think they did a good job at the start giving the backstory of the ten rings and Shang-Chi's father the Mandarin uh and you know, I'm getting the rings, then meeting his mother, and I thought that scene where his parents meet and then they start fighting at first, but then it goes into more of this dance was really cool. Um, I think a lot of the choreography in this movie, like, goes, like, you know, feels a lot like a dance to it, and it gives, that just, it's so cool to watch, like, um, you know, even if it isn't, like, realistic, like, yeah, like, you know, it's this dance choreography, but it's like, it just looks so awesome. This choreographed thing, it feels like it's just this fluid dance that's going on, but it's still a fight, and that was awesome throughout this movie, how each of the fight scenes kind of had this kind of, you know, again, choreographed dance kind of feel to the uh, fight pattern, the, you know, I thought that was great. Then we get introduced to uh, Aquafina's character, Katie, and uh, I think throughout this movie, her and Shang-Chi's relationship was really good. They had good banter. Uh, they just, you could tell, like, you know, they set them up as their best friends from uh, high school, and you could tell they're just having a lot of fun together. Like, it doesn't feel forced. Like, it's just, the chemistry is there. You just feel like, okay, yeah, these are two people. They love being together. Like, they're just, they have so much fun together. They have good back and forth. And they're set up as having kind of mundane lives. Like, they're just valet drivers. Like, they're just, you know. Um, I think that <laughs> when they first introduced them as being, uh, ha you know, that being their job, and they show, you know, they show Shang-Chi waking up, getting ready for work, then they show, you know, somebody drive, driving in this really expensive car, and it pulls up, and you're like, wow, Shang-Chi has this really expensive car, and he gets, the guy gets out, and it's not him, then they pan over to actually Shang-Chi, uh, and he's a valet driver, so that was a really funny, uh, you know, joke there. I think they did that well. Um, I think it may have been in the trailers, too, but... Uh, I, th I forgot about that, so that was a really funny moment of like, I, I like that joke, that was good. Um, and so, obviously that's play off as a joke at first, but it goes into the theme of like, you know, they're living these, they're living these kind of, you know, boring lives, and they're having fun with it, but they, they have so much more potential for what they could do, and they're just kind of not you know, going for it. They're not taking chances. They're just like, yeah, this is fine. This is what we're going to, I mean, this, I mean, it's not like they're, you know, bored with their lives, but it's like, 
the Kavan. Like, you're just doing that? Like, you could do much more. And you even have them, uh, you know, they have that conversation where they're talking to their other friend and she's telling, she's, you know, telling them the same thing. Like, yeah, you guys, you could do so much more than just being valets. Like, you're meant for greatness and you're just doing that. You're just kind of fooling around. You know, if you need to actually go for something and that goes and you know that becomes the theme of this film where throughout the film uh they become something more obviously shang chi gets the ten rings and becomes a superhero and joins the larger marvel universe and aquafina's character kate uh she joins that also you know she learns with the bow and arrow she you know learns how to fight also and she kind of uh, joins that world as well, um, which that was very surprising. I wasn't expecting her to get in on the action as much. I wasn't expecting her to become uh, a hero. I don't know. I, I don't know. Like, does she have? Is her character? Does her character have a name in the comics, or is this just like a new thing they brought in? Um, because I think that would be really cool if like she's becoming a character from the comics and. You know, I just, I wouldn't ex have expected that. Like, I, like, I would have always expected her to just kind of be this, like, sidekick to him. Like, this, this kind of, like, you know, comic relief character that's there for the journey, but isn't, like, you know, you know, if she helps out, it's more of stumbling into helping out. But, you know, she actually learns how to shoot a bar an hour. She actually learns how to fight. She actually learns to, you know, get in on the action, to be a hero, to, you know, join this world of being a hero, and so, I thought that was cool, that, you know, I wasn't expecting that, and that's the route that they went, uh, that was really nice, and so, uh, actually jumping back to, uh, the fight sequences, um, what I really like about this film is how they're just, they really just, like, don't leave much time between fight sequences like there's you know they have at the beginning the fight sequence uh you know with his parents and then they go a little bit of time then there's the bus fight which i thought that was really awesome uh that that's that's when i was like okay this is good i am enjoying this i was you know that's what brought me really into it was the bus sequence of like okay okay this is good i i I like this. I like this a lot. The choreography of that was great. Uh, seeing him reveal who he actually is to Katie, uh, that was awesome, and that was great. And then they, and then you know, they go uh, more to more the backstory, and we have the funny uh, thing in the plane where uh, he says that he changed his name to Sean. And she's like, wait, so your real name is Shang Chi and you change your name to Sean? And they make a joke about that, how that's like not different at all. Uh, it's like the most, the tiniest detail. Shang Chi, Sean. Um, so that goes back to the banter between them. Again, that's great throughout the movie is their relationship, their banter. Um, but anyway, then we get the Wong versus Abomination fight. That was cool. It's just kind of like a random thing thrown in here. Like, obviously, Wong comes back at the end of the movie, but, like, it's a cool, like, this kind of, like, random thing thrown in here. Like, oh, yeah, by the way, in this fight club thing that they went to, Wong's fighting Abomination, apparently. Um, and there's actually a few Easter eggs here. Like, I think there's somebody who has the Extremis virus um, still there. Uh, so, like, that was one thing that I pointed out that I was like, wait, that's the extremist virus? That still exists? Somebody still has that? Um, and I think there's a few other Easter eggs that I probably didn't cat didn't, you know, pick up on, but I there's probably a few Easter eggs there. Um, I wouldn't be surprised that there's like multiple Easter eggs in that, you know, one scene. Um, but uh, we get uh, Wong versus Abomination, then we get Shang-Chi versus his sister, which his sister was another surprise in this movie Um, because I don't think she was in the trailers at all and she ended up being like this Badass of the movie like as soon like as soon as like they were going to the backstory and they showed his sister and they showed 
his sister like learning to fight and stuff i was like i really hope they show her later being a badass and it happened it happened they show her later fighting just that was cool and i love how like that wasn't really shown in the trailers i don't think um she was this kind of surprise character and she was amazing um i really enjoyed you know her addition to the film and so we get shang chi versus sister and then i think like only like one or two minutes go by and then we're straight into this big battle in this building on the side of the building where the mandarin's army is coming after them and they're having to fight them on the scaffolding on the side of the building and they're falling and then but they're still fighting and it's that was awesome uh again choreography was great the spectacle was great it was a really awesome fight sequence and so then they get captured by their father and they escape and we get the car chase and them escaping another action sequence and then they find where her mother's uh tribe was they start training for them with them and then we get into big final battle third act also all of it was great you know shang chi versus his father was great uh shang chi versus his father again was great shang chi versus this dragon was great which i'd like to point out that this is the second uh dragon related movie that aquafina has appeared in this year obviously the first being ryan the last dragon and this was obviously better um but yeah i just think that this movie did a good job with the fight sequences and like not you know really just going from one one fight sequence to another and it wasn't like you know they had a good balance of fight sequences and slow dialogue emotional moments um they had a good back and forth between it where they you know they had a lot of fight sequences but it wasn't like saturated where you're just like oh my god they're just doing a bunch of fight sequences like they did a bunch but it was they were all awesome they were all choreographed great um they all had a thing that I remember specifically from them. Also, I'm um, going back to, I'm sorry, I keep jumping around to different things. I keep kind of forgetting things I wanted to say in different uh, sections of the video, but uh, going back to kind of the theme of the movie that we kind of get with both Shang-Chi and uh, Katie's character, um, you know, the idea of, you know, finding your purpose, you know, taking chances, not just settling for, um, you know, mundane life like actually going for something actually trying to you know achieve greatness um you know there's a really awesome quote uh in this movie that i think shang chi's aunt tells katie uh which is if you aim for nothing you will hit nothing and i thought that was amazing uh you know it's obviously, uh, you know, she's teaching her to shoot a bow, and so it's, you know, connected to that idea, but also is being applied to, uh, you know, her life, uh, not aiming for anything, and so she's not hitting anything, she's not trying to do anything with her life, and so she isn't doing anything, um, she's not going to, and so... Um, I thought that was an amazing quote. That's definitely one of those quotes that you hear it and you're like, wow. Like, Marvel's doing really good with having these quotes um, lately. Like, they had What is Grief, If Not Love, Persevering, and WandaVision, where you hear that and you're like, oh my god, that is amazing. How did they come up with that? And, you, and here you have, if you aim for nothing, you will hit nothing. And it's just a simple thing, but you're like, God, that is hot. That is wow. I love that line. I love that they included it here. That was one of my favorite lines from the movie. But moving on to probably one of the biggest surprises of this movie. Uh, I guess not really that big of a surprise since I think it had been rumored before. Um, but something that kind of surprised me was uh, seeing the fake Mandarin, uh, Trevor from Iron Man 3 reappear here uh <laughs> that was hilarious um i thought that you know it's just it's so funny how like 
it's just this another one of these just random things thrown in there where it's just they're trying to find a way to escape the real mandarin's uh you know base and they just run into trevor the fake mandarin from iron man 3 and he's just there with this weird mystical creature who has wings but doesn't have a head uh you know this he's just friends with this creature and becomes a source of a lot of comic relief in this movie just like that pairing throughout the movie leads to a lot of comic relief um the pairing of fake mandarin trevor and uh the winged creature with no head uh i should remember the name but i don't remember his name um yeah that led to a lot of hilarious moments i thought i thought that addition to the movie was great uh, especially in the movie where we get to see the real Mandarin. Uh, it's so funny to also be able to see the fake Mandarin um, reappear also to have a bunch of hilarious moments. Um, that was a great addition to the film. But now, uh, since I talked about the fake Mandarin, I think I should talk about the real Mandarin, Shang-Chi's father. And I think that he was a great villain in this movie. Um, he's... I think he's one of the best villains of the MCU because he really isn't a villain. Um, he's understandable in why he's doing what he's doing and you know he's really just being deceived by the true villain which is the creature that's uh, you know being held behind this wall by the uh, you know by the tribe by Shang-Chi's mother's tribe. Uh, that's really the true villain trying to escape, um, deceiving Shang-Chi's father and thinking that his wife is still alive and, uh, and that if he opens up the, you know, that wall, you know, that's where she's being held, um, where in reality, obviously, the creature is being held there and if he takes down the wall, the creature will, uh, escape and that happens at the end of the film. Um, and so, you know, it's this cool situation, uh, that I love from movies when the villain isn't really a villain, you know, the villain is just being deceived, um, the villain is doing stuff because they think this is the case and they're just wrong about this being the case, um, but it's understandable why they would believe that that is, um, so, uh, I think that that was done very well, uh, you know, him as a villain and being redeemed at the end uh, and realizing that he was wrong and right before he dies, right before he's killed by the big monster creature dragon thing, uh, gives Shang-Chi the rings, which I thought that was such an amazing moment. Um, you know, there was a lot of emotions to that of like, you know, he's sorry, and he's, like, just, he just gives them to him, because he's, like, you have them, he gives them up, something that he's never given up, he's only ever given up for his mother, for his wife, Shang-Chi's mother, um, you know, he only gave them up for her, and he does it again here for Shang-Chi, gives them up, gives him the rings as his last dying action. Uh, that was such a great moment. But even the moment before that, when we're, uh, when Shang-Chi gets the rings the first time, and, you know, as they're fighting and, uh, you know, he throws all the rings at him and then he comes out with all of them, uh, you know, listening to him. Uh, that was an epic moment. Of course, he just throws them down, uh, which I was like, really? He just threw them down like that? Like, I would have just kept them like, hey, they're listening to me now. Uh, but I guess that's why Shang-Chi is Shang-Chi, and I'm not. Um, <laughs> that's what makes Shang-Chi different than everybody else. Um, so he just says, throws them down. It's like, I don't want him. You take them back. He's, and so 
uh, but then he gets given them back a second later anyway. Uh, so I thought that was an epic moment. Then after his father dies, uh, we go into you know the final final battle, going up against the big dragon, evil dragon creature. And I think that whereas Black Widow hadn't really earned the you know, big, crazy final battle, falling through the sky, fighting each other, you know, fighting the villain while falling and landing on various pieces of debris, um, and then hitting the ground and somehow not dying is like, that's a bit much. That's a bit much for a Black Widow movie. But for a Shang-Chi movie, they set up the magical element of it. They set up the mystical element of it. They had Wong in it. They had Abomination in it. They had all this stuff. The Ten Rings are this mystical thing where they're obeying the Mandarin somehow. Like, you know, the premise of it is mystical, magical, big. Um, and so this film earned the big crazy battle fighting a giant dragon. Um, and... I'll, I'll just say that I feel like it, my only complaint is that it's not the scope of it, but it's the length and it's the amount of, like, moments they had, the amount of big moments. Like, I feel like they had too many big moments of, like, they have the Shang-Chi getting the dragon moment, and they have the Shang-Chi getting the rings and giving them up moment. Then they have the dragon being released and his father dying and giving him the rings moment. Then they have the moment between Shang-Chi and his sister moment. And they have Aquafina's character, Katie. Uh, they have her big moment with the bow and arrow. And I just feel like they had too many big moments uh, between characters or four characters that were just like, you could have dialed it down a bit. You could have had, you know, cut a few out, um, combined a few. Like, I feel like they didn't need the Shang-Chi gets the rings and gives them up. They could have just had... The Shang-Chi gets the rings when his father dies, or just, you know, I, I mean, it's nice to have that moment where his father gives him the rings, but it's like, I feel like it's weird to have both. It's weird to have the moment where he gets them, and then gives them up, and then gets them back. It's like, just have them, have him get them once. Um, or like, especially, like, don't do them, like, consecutively, like, have him get them earlier, and then have the fight keep going, keep going, and then we have the moment where he gets them again. Because the way it is, it's like he gets them, gives them back, and then gets them again. And it's, I think, could have, if they were going to do that, they needed to have some more time between each. Um, like, have the fight between his father and him, and have him get the rings, but have them give them back, and tell his father, just do what you're going to do. And then his father goes, does the thing, it doesn't you know, blows up in his face, and then he gives them back the rings, but there's, like, ten minutes between the two moments, um, where, like, you kind of forgot that the moment happened. Because the way it happens, you're like, okay, he just gave them back, but he's getting them again, so... It was weird. Um, I think that they could have done the big moments in the final battle a little bit better, um, but even then, it's not that big of a complaint. I think it worked fine enough. Um, it's just a minor complaint that I had. Now, one final thing I want to say before I get into the mid-credit and post-credit scenes is how, um, this movie really shows that Marvel does such a good job with these obscure characters from the comics. You know, we've seen it before in the MCU a few times. The most notable is Guardians of the Galaxy, where those are characters n nobody's heard of. Nobody had heard of before the movie came out. Nobody thought it was going to be good. Everybody was like, what the heck is Marvel doing? They're, what the heck, there's a talking tree and a raccoon? Like, what, what is happening here? Um, but it ended up being one of the best MCU movies. And it made the Guardians of the Galaxy household names. Like, ten years ago, if you had asked me who Star-Lord is, or who Rocket Raccoon is, or if you just said, I am Groot, I would have no idea what you were talking about. But now, you say that, I'm like, yeah, Star-Lord. From the Guardians of the Galaxy, played by Chris Pratt. Rocket Raccoon, yeah. From the Guardians of the Galaxy, I am Groot. 
yeah, that's the thing Root always says. <laughs> um, you know, it's like, it's so crazy how, you know, they took these obscure characters, nobody's heard of them, and turned them into household names, and you could see that's what's happening here. They took this really obscure character, Shang-Chi. Nobody's heard of Shang-Chi before. Unless you're a die-hard comics fan, you've probably never heard of Shang-Chi. But now, you're like, he's a cool character. I really enjoyed the movie. I can't wait to see him in other stuff. Whereas, a month ago, I'm still like, yeah, I don't know who this character is. Like, what is going on here? Um, but now, I'm like, I cannot wait to see him in something else. He was cool. The movie was awesome. And I think this shows they do a really good job with these obscure characters. And I think it's because it's harder to mess up these obscure characters. Because if you mess up Spider-Man's origin story, people are going to know. Everybody knows Spider-Man's origin story. But if you mess up Shang-Chi's origin story, nobody's really going to know the difference. And even if somebody does, that means they're a diehard comics fan, and they're probably just happy to see Shang-Chi on the big screen anyway. And so I think that because of that, they have more creative liberties for these movies using these obscure characters because they don't have to fit in like, oh yeah, we have to fit in this thing and this thing and this thing because that's how, it, you know, you have to do it. You know, you have to fit in Spider-Man getting bitten by a radioactive, radioactive spider and you have to fit in Uncle Ben dying and you have to fit in all this stuff. Um, you, know, you know, whereas if you just pick this character nobody's heard of, it's like, you can do really whatever you want. I mean, yeah, you don't want to go crazy with it where you do something that's not even the character at all. But, you know, you don't have to, you know, conform to exactly what, um, you know, it's said in the comics. You don't have to conform to the exact origin story. You can, you know, make your own changes, make the movie you want to make. And I think that that allows these movies where you don't know anything about the character it allows them to be much better, um, some of the best movies in the MCU, because you don't have to worry about, oh, but they didn't do this, and this was an important thing they should have done. Like, no, you don't know what they should have done. You don't know that they didn't do this thing. And so you can just watch it and be like, okay, that's how it is. I didn't know that, how the character worked. And I didn't know that was his origin story. Now I know. Pretty cool. All right. This is a good movie. And so I just think that Marvel does a really good job with these obscure characters um, and, you know, making their movies really great. Because um, those seem to be the great, you know, the best ones of it, like Black Panther. Nobody really heard of Black Panther before the movie came out, but the movie was amazing. Uh, same thing with this. So, um, and so that definitely gets me excited for a lot of the, you know, the upcoming Marvel projects, because it seems like they're kind of going more that route of using these, you know, introducing these obscure characters, like the Eternals. I don't think many people have heard of the Eternals, but knowing that Marvel always does a good job with these obscure characters, I know it's going to be great. Um, you know, same thing with, like, there's going to be the Moon Knight TV show, uh, it's, you know, Disney Plus show at some point, and that's a character a lot of people haven't heard of, it's probably going to be great. Um, so I'm excited for where the MCU is going because it seems like they're going to do more of these obscure characters from the comics and those always end up being amazing. So I'm very excited to see where this is going. There seems to be some really cool stuff, um, but not cool stuff in the sense of like, oh man, I know what this is and it's going to be awesome. Cool stuff in the sense of like, I don't know what this is but they always do a good job with it, so it's going to be awesome. Anyway though, uh, now I'll move on to talking about the mid credit scene and the post credit scene. So mid credit scene, uh, Shang-Chi gets taken by Wong and uh, he meets up with Captain Marvel and Bruce Banner, who isn't Professor Hulk anymore. How did that happen? Why is he Bruce Banner now? Um, I hope that they, you know, fill in the gap there. There's better be an interesting storyline with that, an interesting, uh, you know, explanation. Like, that was, like, something weird, like, because, like, 
you see him at first and you're like, okay, yeah, Bruce Banner. Then you're like, wait a second, but he wasn't Bruce Banner in Endgame. He was Professor Hulk. He was the combination of the two. So how is he back to Bruce Banner? Ugh. I can't wait for them to explain that. That was such, that was such like, again, it's a random thing thrown in there. It's just, and like, they don't even address it. It's just like, he's there, he's Bruce Banner. And you're like, wait, but how? He's there. But how? Um, so, I'm excited. Um, and so we also, uh, in this post credit, in this mid credit scene, uh, basically Shang Chi gets recruited by the Avengers, and they basically say, "Yeah, you've joined this larger world of the Avengers. You're stuck here now." Uh, sorry about that. Sorry I got tied into this, but uh, we're probably gonna have to call you in at some point to save the world. So. Stay tuned for that call. You know, keep your don't don't put your phone on silent. You know, we'll we'll be calling soon. <laughs> and so, uh, and so, then, uh, Chong Chi and Katie are like, "What do we do now?" And so they go do karaoke with Mong. <laughs> that was funny. That was hilarious. Um. Anyway, though, then the post credit scene. You know, whereas the mid credit scene was the connection to the larger MCU, the post credit scene is the connection to future Shang-Chi movies. And we find out his sister has uh, taken control of the Mandarin's army, and she's now, I guess, the new Mandarin. Um, and I guess she'll be the villain of the next Shang-Chi movie, uh, which I think is really cool. Uh, can't wait to see that. Um, and so that's how it all ends. That's how the movie ends. and. Again, I thought it was great. It was much better than I expected. Um, not that I expected it to be bad, but I didn't expect it to be this good. Um, or like, I didn't have expectations for it. Because I didn't know who Shang-Chi was, um, which I think that's another reason why these obscure characters work so well, is because you don't have expectations going in. And so, you know, you're kind of not like, you know, for something like Spider-Man No Way Home, you're going in with high expectations, and they're probably going to be, you're probably going to be disappointed. Um, but with Shang-Chi, you're going in like, I don't know what this is going to be. And you watch it, and you're like, okay, that was amazing. I wasn't expecting that. Not that I, was, I wasn't really expecting anything, but I wasn't expecting that. Um, so, um, it's kind of that kind of situation, and I think that definitely happened here. Um, where it was just a really fun movie, the energy was great, the fight choreography was great, the story, the emotions, the use of flashbacks, uh, they do a good job with flashbacks throughout it, of, you know, doing different flashbacks and having different, like, storylines and flashbacks, you know, be a thing throughout the movie, um, going back to different ones, um, where they become relevant, and so they definitely have a good use of flashbacks throughout it, um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this movie, you could tell we're being introduced to this character that's going to become a major player in the MCU moving forward, and I'm really excited to see what happens next with Shang-Chi and the rest of the MCU. Anyway though, please comment below your thoughts on Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, and please remember to give this video a like, subscribing to the channel, and maybe check out some of my other videos. And with that said, that's a wrap.